These replacement grips for Fanatec formula wheels are a nice upgrade from standard and you can 3D print these today. The links to the files are in the description. I designed these because I was unhappy with the strength of the standard Fanatec design. Straight out of the box I could feel some flex in the wheel and I think there are also some fundamental design issues that lead to common failures that some of you at home would have experienced. Luckily, Fanatec hasn't made any fundamental design changes to their formula rims since the Formula Carbon was released 10 years ago, so these replacement grips are compatible with almost every formula steering wheel out there, including those that are being sold today. So long as it has these three mounting points at the back, you should be able to use these grips. Let's see what I've improved. Stiffness and durability are the first factors. The standard grips are just hollow shells of plastic and quite flexible by themselves. I've designed my grips to be a solid shape with a bottom, walls and top, and you can decide whether you want the grips to be fully solid plastic or some percentage of infill. And even with very modest settings, these printed grips are already a lot stiffer than standard. I've also carefully designed the common failure points to be as thick and strong as possible given the space available. I've also designed grips that bolt onto the center hub of the steering wheel, and that allows you to convert an open bottom steering wheel into a closed bottom, which hugely improves the stiffness. The factory closed bottom steering wheels like this one on the left are actually quite stiff already, but I've designed my grips to be fully compatible with the closed and open bottom wheels, so you can use any of my grips on any of these steering wheels. This grip really improves the way the open bottom formula rims feel, and you can print it on any 3D printer out there, even small ones like this Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. You'll just have to print one at a time. My grips don't reuse the three factory screws in the back of each grip. I originally wanted to reuse them to make it simpler for you guys to just print and use the grip straight away, but in my opinion the factory screws from Fanatec are actually part of the reason that the grips always break, because they're just a bit short and they put a lot of stress onto the part of the front grip where they screw into. So my grips use longer 12mm bolts and these threaded inserts that you embed into the 3D print. I also use these M3 bolts which are embedded into the front grips as indexing pins. They just slide into the rear grips and you can use shorter bolts for easier assembly but these 16mm bolts give a really secure fit between the front and rear grips. Since you 3D print these grips yourself you can choose the colour and the material and particularly if you have a closed bottom rim and you don't need the extra stiffness of the larger grips you can print just these little ones for a little dash of colour or you can print the full single colour piece for a more colour dominant look. The housings for the vibration motors are nice and compact and there's cable management built into the grip design. It can seem quite daunting to have to take apart your formula steering wheel to install these grips but having done it a few times it's actually quite straightforward and I'll have full instructions later on in the video. The ergonomics of Fanatec's formula rims are often complained about. They're just a bit small for a lot of people so I've made my grips in three sizes. We have 270mm which is the same width as the standard formula rim. I've made a 280mm and also a 290mm. And all three rear grips share the same side profile. I've designed the curvature so that it perfectly lines up with my knuckles as I enclose my fingers around the grip. And since the standard carbon fibre plate remains in place with these grips, as we make the grips wider, the thumb hole actually remains the same. So I've paid special attention to the front half of the grips, especially the 290mm, to make sure that all of them are comfortable. And I'm happy to say that all three grips are very comfortable in my hands. Thanks to their ergonomic shape, the fact that the grips are solid plastic is not an issue at all, particularly if you like to race in gloves like I do. If you're wanting a fabric covering like leather or Alcantara, have a look at Pineapple Grips. They have a lot of cool products, but the lead time on their deliveries is about three months, and they cost a fair bit more than my grip packages, so I think it's worth at least giving my grips a try to see if they suit your needs. And finally, if you're someone who likes to personalise your rig, I've made a version of the one-piece front grip design with a little accent plate with which you can do anything. And this wheel actually belongs to my friends at OzFDM who are also my 3D printing filament supplier. And be sure to check out my review of the V400 printer where you can see how amazingly their product performs. Anyways, the accent plate that comes supplied in the digital file is actually blank, but it's quite trivial to modify the STL to apply your own logo to it. And here's a couple of examples that I've also made. All the files are hosted at Colts 3D and the first are these which are free. These are little statues of the grips in the three sizes. We have the 270, 280 and 290 millimeter. So you can print these out and just see how they feel in your hand and see which of these is going to suit you the best. These are all just the right hand side but it's quite easy in your slicer to mirror them so you have one for the left and the right. And if you print these in a pretty filament like this gold silk PLA you can use them as decorations around the house when you're done with them. Then we have the basic grips, which are a really great economical option that allow you to improve the ergonomics of your rim, add a little dash of colour, and also improve the stiffness marginally. 
These are especially suited to the closed bottom rims, which are already quite stiff. But for the factory open bottom rims, I do think it's worth looking at the other packages since they actually have significant stiffness improvements as well. All pricing is in US dollars and it's $10 for the 270mm grips, $10 for the 280mm grips and $15 for the 290mm grips, which include designs for shifter paddle extensions for the standard shifters as well as the advanced paddle module. Since these are 3D printed, the material itself is not as stiff as the carbon fibre that the standard paddle shifters come with, so I've added these rib design features to the paddle extensions, which gives them impressive strength for a 3D printed part. If you're wanting to try out different grip sizes or some of the reinforced grip designs that I showed you before, my best value kit is $30 and that includes the basic grips, the closed grips, as well as the one piece integrated grips in all three sizes. So you get 270, 280 and 290 millimeters in all three. So for $30, you get nine different grip combinations and it actually costs less than if you were to just get the basic grips in the three sizes. And if you're wanting the one piece grip with the accent plate at the bottom, that's gonna cost $35. But again, that includes everything you see here, all of the grips that we've shown, and again, in all the sizes. So 270, 280, and 290 millimeter. So you actually get 12 grip packages in this one package, and it includes the paddle shifter extensions and also the accent plate, which is supplied blank. And as I mentioned before, it's pretty straightforward to add your own designs onto that. But if you do buy this package and you're not sure how to modify the STL, just get in touch with me and send me an adequate SVG file. And I'll make the changes to the STL and send it back to you ready to print with no additional cost. I think this design is a lot of fun and particularly useful if you have a brand that you want to promote. If you enjoy your grips, I'd really appreciate if you shared lots of photos on social media and let people know where to find them. All right, so you've downloaded your package of choice. What's the next step towards getting these grips onto your wheel? So we'll go ahead and open the folder and we can see that this is actually the complete collection, which has every single model that we talked about. So we have here 31 separate STL files. And if we were to open up one of these in Paint 3D, then we can spin it around and we can look at the geometry. And it's an STL file, so you can load that into any of the software that you normally use with your STLs, whether that be a slicer or a modeling program. Uh, of course, just check the terms and conditions of the Cults 3D license on what you can do. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and close this because you don't need to go through the effort of uh, arranging these and painting on the supports because I've done that for you. So if you look at the 3MF files, we'll open that up in Orca Slicer and we'll open it as a project. And then what you'll see is we have all of the parts for that particular size. In this case, it's the 280 millimeter that I open. And we can see that we have the rear grips, we have the front basic grips, the front closed grips, the front integrated grips, and of course the front accent grips, which if we have a look here, we have a little place for the logo plate to bolt onto. And here's the logo plate itself, which is blank, as I talked about before, but it's there anyway. And if I were to check the supports, let's go ahead, flip it upside down, and we can see that we have supports enabled and uh, quite strategically so in certain parts of the grip. So that's what I found to work really well. And what you will need to change is the printer, the filament, and your print settings because unless you happen to be using a Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus, which I do, then uh, you're gonna need to change things out. So let's say that we have a Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. I'll go ahead and select that. We'll transfer the settings over. And we can see that we can certainly print the two rear grips on the A1 Mini there, but everything else doesn't quite fit. So you may need to sort of move these items around to sort of fit within the plate and build areas that you have on your own printer. Before printing your grips, definitely make sure that you dial in the support settings for your printer because my grips depend a lot on their supports and you want them to peel away with almost no effort. If you haven't got the support settings dialed in right, it just becomes a lot more difficult to remove the supports than it needs to be. So I think it's worth spending a couple of hours tuning your support settings before you fire off one of these prints. In terms of equipment needed for this project, of course you're going to need a 3D printer, and you'll need a soldering iron too. In terms of hand tools, you would need a set of pliers, some needle nose pliers and some tweezers, a jeweler's Phillips head driver, and some metric hex keys. These are 1.5 millimeter, two millimeter, and 2.5 millimeter, and then a four millimeter. And for this one, you do need one that's quite a bit longer and preferably with a ball end. And I'll show you why that's important later. 
You're going to need some socket head cap screws. These are M3 by 16 millimeter and M2 by 12 millimeter. And then some brass threaded inserts. These are M2 by four millimeter deep and 3.5 millimeter wide. I got this in a combination pack from AliExpress. So we'll inspect the front grip and you'll see there's three areas that receive the heated inserts. And since these are printed on supports, they are usually not perfectly round because the filament tends to run. But I do find that cleaning them with a tap helps. And then place the brass insert on top and the soldering iron is quite quick to get that one installed. Repeat for the other two on this side of the grip. And if you use a wider grip, so the 280 or the 290, there's an extra two spots on the extension on the periphery that need the inserts too. Now, again on the front grip, let's look at these holes alongside the vibration motor housing. This is where the M3 by 16 millimeter screw gets placed. And so we insert this in much the same way, being careful to keep it dead vertical. And you might need to reheat it and adjust it if you have it slightly off axis. And here's a little tip, because the steel doesn't conduct the heat quite as well as brass, preheat the bolt like this before you actually place it onto the grip. Now on the rear grip alongside the vibration motor housing, these holes you need to make sure that the M3 bolts can slide through quite freely, so just clean them up a little bit. And again, inspect that the front grip has nice vertical bolts, and then you can test fit with the front and rears to make sure that everything lines up. And here is a full set of grips ready to install. Now let's start with the wheel. So we're gonna lay down a soft protective surface, and then the wheel gets placed there. And the first bolts to remove are these two on the bottom. These take the two millimeter hex key. Now we'll flip over the wheel and just place a thumb on this housing and pull it out. And we're gonna take the needle nose pliers and we're going to remove the connectors for the shifters. These are the standard shifters, but if you have the advanced paddle module, you'll be removing connectors from those outboard connectors at the bottom of the PCB. Next, you're gonna take off the shifters and for the standard shifters, you actually need to take the paddles off. If you have the advanced paddle module, then it's quite straightforward. You can leave the paddles on. And you may have seen that I used the pliers to apply a bit more torque to the four millimeter hex key there. And once the bolts are done, you can just sort of fish out the shifter and you might just need to feed the cable through a little bit more deliberately and do the same thing for the other side too. And of course, try to keep all your bolts organized because you will need to put these back when you're done. Now, on the back of the wheel, we're gonna undo all of the bolts. So the very top two take a two millimeter hex key, and then we're gonna use the jeweler's Phillips driver to remove the rest. And then we're gonna carefully flip it back onto the front. And now we're going to wriggle off the front grips. And this can be quite a bit of a fight if they've been on the wheel for quite a while, because they kind of get cemented on with your skin cells and your sweat. But the grips come off without too much of a fight. And now it's a good time to get a damp cloth and clean up any of that muck that we just talked about. Now we're going to remove all of the front bolts. So these four take a 2.5 millimeter key and then the top two take a two millimeter key. And now the front and the rear of the wheel are completely disconnected. So you're going to want to be really careful with the way that you hold the wheel. Don't lift it up by the grips, all right? Because it'll just fall apart on you. But what you do want to do is support the hub right from the back and then carefully flip the wheel over. It's quite straightforward at this point to just lift the housing away and then bring it down towards you and you'll see that the ribbon doesn't let it go too far. Use the needle nose pliers to remove the vibration motor connectors. And you'll see that they're actually threaded through the PCB. So just carefully disengage them. It's a bit fiddly, but you'll get it done. Now for this part, I've turned the wheel over so you can see, but you can actually do this with the wheel upside down, but you want to actually pull the vibration motor forwards out of the wheel. And this is going to take it out of the rear grip, which is what's needed to actually get the rear grip out. So what you'll do now is you'll lift the grip on the periphery and then just slide it out from underneath the PCB and then push the vibration motor back and that is the grip removed. Now's a good time to give the wheel a clean as well. So now we want to separate the vibration motor from the rear grip. So just identify these little bits of hot glue, a little bit of a push and the vibration motor will pop right off. Now's a good time to inspect the cable to see if there's any damage. And I actually found that this cable was damaged. And so a little bit of heat shrink. And this is not the best repair in the world, but it definitely does the job. Now we'll go ahead and place the vibration motor into one of the rear housings. And then we just need to poke and prod the cable into the cable management trench. Just takes a little bit of patience. And once it's in, we can just check that it's held securely by those little fingers. And then we want to press it up into this little groove. 
Now we're going to place the grip along the back and just as before, we're gonna push that vibration motor through. It doesn't have to go all the way through, just enough that it's held in the frame. We'll do that on both sides. And then we're gonna make sure that those cables are clear of the PCB. Tuck the grips under the PCB in the center and then press downwards on the periphery until the grips click into place. Now we're going to connect the vibration motors back to the PCB. And because the cables are on this side of the PCB already, you don't need to clip them into the PCB like they were before. The rear housing can now go back in place. It takes a little bit of jiggling, but it will click right down. We'll go ahead and replace the four screws on the back. Now we can flip the wheel over to the front. And we're going to put these two bolts in for now, and that's going to hold the front and the back nice and securely, so you don't have to be so careful when you pick it up from here on. At this point, the front grips can go on. This is usually a little bit tricky because those bolts need to slide in and they only go in at a very precise angle, but give them a bit of a jiggle and the grips will seat. And now we can put these bolts in. For the closed grips, these bolts actually go through the grip. For the basic grips, you'll just be replacing the bolts straight into the Fanatec housing as per standard. We can go ahead and replace the bolts along the top there as well. Now we'll flip the wheel over to the back and it's time to reinstall the shifters. This one's a bit tricky because you need to thread the cable through and we tighten it with a four millimeter hex key. And this is where the ball end really comes to play because the thickness of the grip sometimes means that you have to be a little bit off axis when you are tightening the bolt. And the extra length of this four millimeter key also helps as well. We'll install both shifters this way and then we'll just reconnect the plugs. We'll go ahead and reinstall the little connector cover, flip the wheel over and replace the two screws that hold this in place. If you're using the accent plate, now's a good time to fit that plate in position. And then we'll fit this with M2 bolts. This one requires shorter M2 bolts. Anywhere from four to eight millimeters works just fine. Then we'll go ahead and put the other M2 bolts into the back. And that is your grips installed. So that's the rundown on my replacement grips for Fanatec Formula rims. I hope that this video has done a good job in showing you the design features and also all the steps that are needed to get this onto your wheel. I know it can seem quite daunting, but when you break it down into little steps, it's actually pretty straightforward. And I spent a lot of effort getting the fit just right, not just really tight, but also easy to install. And I have a drawer full of prototype prints to thank for that. I hope you guys appreciate the design decisions that I made, particularly not reusing the standard screws. I know it would have made life a lot easier for you guys just to print and install, but I wasn't happy publishing a design with a known design flaw, even if it is easier to use. I want you guys to have a quality product and not something that's gonna break like the OEM grips. So I hope you appreciate why I did that and also that it's actually quite straightforward. Anyways, as always, leave a comment. I'm always open to constructive feedback. And if there's anything you can think of that would improve these grips, please let me know. I'd love to hear it. And remember, if you do install these grips on your wheels, post lots of photos on social media and let people know where you found them. All right, that's it from me. I hope to see you in the next video. Make sure you like and subscribe. See you next time.